Kamusta everybody, Flying Endeavor here today and I'm here to present to you the early access test 4 of Armored Warfare. So what exactly is Armored Warfare? Well Armored Warfare is a massive multiplayer online tank game. But what sets it apart from other games out there like War Thunder and World of Tanks? Well, Armored Warfare focuses on modern vehicles, the likes of which include but not limited to the M1 Abrams, the T90 Soviet main battle tank, as well as the Challenger. For sure, they will add more modern tanks into the tech tree. And that basically sets it apart from World of Tanks and War Thunder in terms of content because World of Tanks and War Thunder only cover post-World War II, World War II, and Korean era vehicles, not modern vehicles. Well, at least not too modern as compared to Armored Warfare. So what is different with Early Access Test 4 compared to Early Access Test 3? Well, for starters, I've lost all my tanks. That's technically the most noticeable feature because in Early Access Test 3, they, they allowed us to test their premium vehicles to play around with them all of their premium vehicles so in test 4 let's just say all of them are gone so where did these premium vehicles go? we'll get to that right now let's check out the dealers let's first start with Wolfley so players who have been who have been here ever since early access test 3 would know but immediately spot the difference between the two tech trees. Well for starters the, M the LAV is no longer one of the standard armor vehicles of Sophie or Wolfley. In early access test 3 the M113 goes on to the LAV 150 then that goes on to the Leopard 1 to the M60 Patton then to the Leopard 1. The Leopard 1 used to be tier 4, where the QF40 is. Now this tank, the QF40, used to be in the Shishkin tech tree, here, as a premium vehicle. The Starship here also used to be a premium vehicle, but for Wolfly. And the M48 Patton does not, did not exist. Interesting to note, the M60 and the M48 exist in World of Tanks, as a tier 10 vehicle. The M60 exists in War Thunder as a BR-5 vehicle. As you can see, there are only tier, tier 2 and 3 here in Armored Warfare because, as you may have noticed, there are more modern vehicles out there like this beauty right here. The M1A1 Abrams. So, yeah. So far, here's the tech tree of Wolfley. Separated between the standard armor vehicles, the recon vehicles, the BMP de development, the wheel destroyers, as well as the RD all the way over here. And the premium vehicles right over there. So let's move on to Siskin. Here also you could all members of the previous early access test would also spot the immediate difference. This did not exist in the previous early access test. The T-54. This is a tier 10 medium, is a tier 9 rather, medium tank for World of Tanks and a BR-5 for Ar War Thunder. And, Arm and Armored Warfare is only a tier 2. So the PT-7, this, this does not exist. In place of that is a Scorpion. The Scorpion used to be here in one of Marat's core vehicles. It branches, out, it branches out from the PT-76. Now, this tank, the Object 430, did not exist as well. Interesting to note, this is a tier 10 reward tank for World of Tanks. Interesting. As you can see, they also added lots of different, lots of new vehicles. Such as this, the T-80 and the T-90. To the to Shishkin's tech tree, Soviet. 
Also this, the Ramka. This is uh, used to be in the early access as early access tree as well, but there's interesting to note that this also came in a Terminator variant. Now the Terminator is a premium vehicle back over at Early Access Test 3. It is uh, one of my favorite vehicles, honestly, in Early Access Test 3, but it's gone now. I'm not sure where it went or not sure where, where it will go or if it will still be implemented into the game. It's just up to Obsidian Entertainment to do so. So there you have it, the new, uh, new tech tree. Lots of new vehicles, as well as reshuffling to help balance out the tiers. Just rather good because honestly, it felt a bit awkward that this branches us out to the LAV, then it suddenly branches us out to an M60 Patton. It feels a bit awkward, honestly. A lot of players complain about that. Is good at least Obsidian is paying attention to their player base to an extent. So here we go. Early access test 4. Now they've also added a lot of different missions in PvE maps that is such as the mission Wildfire. So for Wildfire there's a glitch. A glitch for ULQ which basically makes the map, the entire map white, everything white. And as well as invi invisible tanks. They will be capping your base, you could be at the base, they would be capping the base beside you, they could be shooting you and utterly destroying you and you could not see them. So yeah, do not, do not be ashamed if you get destroyed or beaten up in that mission because it's really glitched, honestly. So... And perhaps I'll show you a video of that soon. TM. But enough of my ramblings. Let's go on to gameplay. So, and let's start with the M113. The first tank I used in early access test 4. I, I usually play PvE, don't blame me. Because PvE is what's basic. It's another thing that sets it apart from World of Tanks. As well as Armored Warfare. Because Brutal Tanks over offers PvP. Armored Warfare um War Thunder also offers PvP. So what's the difference with Armored Warfare? It has PvE. Player versus environment. And it also helps you grind. Grind your vehicles. Spade it out without having to go through the frustrations of PvP. Which is always good. So let's go. Player versus environment vision. So, Ricochet. M113, let's see. More than the low time. My computer is, uh, my computer is not that good. So, there we go. The cartel is using this port to traffic ammo and weapons. Help the International Security Department capture the port. Sure enough, okay. Yes, you can see my ping in FAS is not that good. Guide to winning. Complete the primary objective to win. Markers on your minimap guide you. Stand by for new intel. Our airstrike team is en route to destroy cartel contraband. Intel suggests it's hidden amongst emergency relief supplies. See if you can find the contraband before everything is destroyed. May the guide be with you. Oh, pfft. I know how to fire. <laughs> oh, graphics glitch right there. That looks like one of ours. Keep moving. Oops. Come on, move back, move back. Sorry about that. So, yeah, this tank has no armor. And it's not really that fast, to be honest. But it's decent. And this gun is great, it's an auto-loader cannon. Oh, come on! As you can see, it could easily... tear the health out of an enemy. Provided the enemy does not turn his gun and fire back at you. 
because this thing could not bounce shots. Upturn tank right there. So right now I'm gonna head over to the objective at C3, the cartel contraband. The enemy supply cr caches. Good job. We'll take that one out. There we go. Step behind me. Another M113. It's inter also interesting to note that in PVE, some of the tanks may be of a higher tier than you, but they're considerably weaker. Hence why the markers on top of them, the name, salvaged, upgraded, superior. It will signify the kind of um, what kind of tank they are, how powerful they are. All right, my time moving in to support that guy is just going straight out there. Let's see if he could spot something for me. There we go. You're just gonna you're just gonna fall in love with this gun when you use it, honestly. My gun depression seems to be inadequate. So there you go, he disappeared. So and reappeared again. So hopefully that does not make a lot of players players cringe because in War Thunder that sort of thing makes players cringe a lot. Yeah, you can't shoot through that. The small parts of that. Contraband. It's not Good yet. We'll take that one out. Oh, nope. Let's see if I could get a shot at that. Uh, again, not enough gun depression. Oops. Someone near me. Someone firing at me. Come on. Die. Ow. Alright, sorry about that. In retrospect, I should have moved back earlier. And uh, you might hate me for this. Yeah. Okay, I lost nearly all my health there. I should have been more careful. You could. This tank is not very forgiving for mistakes like that. Sorry. Don't, do not be like me and just stand like um... Do not be like me and just sit still while being shot at. Right. Oh, another one. Alright. Alright, now that was a lucky shot by that bot. Curse you, bot. Another one bites the dust. So right now I'm trying to go for the objectives. You see those little blue square squares? Those are the objectives. And I did so far 2705 HP worth of damage. So yeah, there we go. That's one. Thanks for the info. Unfortunately they won't arrive in time. To truly support us. Okay. It's really interesting to note that the support that the support that they keep talking about arrives um, arrives right after all the enemy tanks are dead or that 
when you have captured the objective. So it's not really support per se. So yeah, I'm just gonna put a warning over here for headphone users. Oops. Um. Okay. All right, that one missed. So right now. Ow. Okay, that was a big mistake. I thought I could have um destroyed him because he's a bot. Why not? So 2,874 damage, all in all. So you would question why I had to ro I had to rush through the open like that in front of their guns. Well, I needed to fulfill the objective before my team caps the base. So yeah, taking one down for the team. And I ended it with a bang. Most damage cost. And one of the highest the highest kill count with eight kills. So how much did I gain? What did I gain from that player versus environment battle? Well, let's see with the after battle report. Coming right up. So I gained a total of 462 experience points. For 4,432 credits, as well as an achievement. And, um... I did 2,874 HP worth of damage for 8 kills. And I spotted 11 vehicles. For 231 experience. Let's go to the details. So... That is actually my first win for the day. The times 2 multiplier is equivalent to 462. That's a gross total. As well, and for my credits, 4,432 gross total. If I had premium, that would have been 693 experience and 6,648 credits. But I know that premium. Oh well. So there you go. 462 experience, 4,432 credits for 2,874 damage, 11 enemies spotted, and 8 enemies destroyed. So here's my crew, as you can see, nothing much has changed. The EXP gain has been mediocre. So that pretty much sums it up, my very first battle in Armored Warfare. So you can see there, this is slightly different in terms of graphics. You see, I had to splice up some of my videos to cover this, my very first battle. As there have been lots of delays. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my very first video of Armored Warfare. Rest assured, more will come in the future. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. So, yeah. Armored Warfare. So, see you on the battlefield, fellow testers.